Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 53. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by producer extraordinaire, Mark Carabin, the Canardian. How are you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm very excited to distract ourselves a little from all that's going on in the world and talk about video games and hopefully in turn distract some other people who might just want to escape for an hour or so and uh, and and listen to video game talk and <laughs> just kind of uh it's it's uh it's the world's just like everyone was like hey 2021 is going to be better and then six days in it was like uh, hold my beer 2020 we're going to get weird right away so uh Without getting too political, I suppose, how are you feeling, Todd, as as the, the resident American? We're, we're just watching from Canada, eating our ketchup chips, enjoying our poutines, and uh, and kind of worried about our, our friendly neighbors to the south. So how how are you doing? Um, It's been it's been a, 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 a tough week, I will not lie. You know, 2020 sucked. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots of bad things have happened. Um. And so I was really getting starting to get very positive. I'm like, this is going to be better. I look back mm-hmm. at the year. I'm like, some good things did happen. And I was trying to stay positive and keep rolling. And then, like everybody in the world, saw what happened um, with at Capitol Hill, and it just really took the wind out of my sails. It was like a gut punch. It just felt like yeah. this is what 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 we've come to. And it's just very much uh, very very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, I am hopeful we can get past uh, the next 11 days or so or so <laughs> and <laughs> have a fresh start to things and get things back on track. Um, I don't know how it's going in Canada right now, but I just looked in my state of Minnesota, only 5% of uh, the population has received a dose uh, uh, of the vaccine yet. We've got a long right. ways to go. Yeah. So I just yeah. Want to, in, I just want to change. Uh, yeah. It, here in, in Nova Scotia our, uh and, and in the rest of Canada, I think it's, it's a little slow. Uh, in Nova Scotia, where I am, it's um, so far, I believe, just frontline workers. So my wife uh, usually works in the hospital, but she's on mm-hmm. maternity leave right now. Uh, but her whole crew just got the first dose of vaccine today. So if she was working, she would have had uh, a dose. Sure. But uh, because she's off, she actually emailed her boss uh, this afternoon because she heard everyone was getting it. And she said, OK, I'm going back in May, but public rollout could be who knows next fall or something like what's the situation here so uh she's kind of still waiting to hear back on what's going to happen so she right now it's it's kind of up in the air like does she go back in may without a vaccine or like what's what's going to happen so it is um you know 2021 uh just let's let's just hope it it turns itself around or, or we can all help turn it around so Absolutely. Fingers we and, and we need to be better. The world yeah. needs to be better. We need some positivity because we're only going to get through this together. So, folks, um, you know, stick with us. This is co-op mode. We are in this together, as we said. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not the best gamer in the world. So uh, when I say with you, I mean you're carrying me along the way <laughs> uh, on the squad. But that's OK. I'm a great cheerleader. I, I will be on your back saying, go, Mark, go. Go, Mark, go. <laughs> well, one thing we're both cheerleading for right now, and I want to start this before we start any of the stuff we're going to get into today, is uh, Bobby, the Nintendo guru. We've we've talked about this for a couple of months now. Uh, Bobby's not been doing good. He's been in the hospital with COVID since early November. I think he might have been admitted on my birthday, like November 4th. He's been in there for a while. Like it might have been or late October, like Halloween. Anyway, somewhere around there. Um, but he has been doing not great for a very long time. And uh, there's a big group of us that that want to help make things at least a tiny bit better for him as much as we can. Um, so we're we're involved. Uh, there's other people. I don't want to miss anyone. So <laughs> I'm going to maybe not try to list everyone. But uh, I know Sean Capri, uh, the Nintendo Dads. Um, there's other streamers, uh, PSVG, Mega Dads, yep. uh, Quest for Pixels guys, Joe After Work. Uh, I've got a little list up here now, so I'm kind of cheating here. Uh, Lizabel, Holly Crossing, Kato Potato, uh, or Console Kato, uh, the, the Mr. Badbit, uh, Joseph, who's who's recovering himself. So it's absolutely yes. amazing that Joe's um, 
like running with the rest of us on this because he is literally still in recovery mode from COVID, still dealing with stuff uh, himself, but he's still saying, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm stepping up for this. So it, it's amazing. Um, so just <laughs> like I said, there's a big group. Um, and uh, basically there's going to be a big streaming uh, push next weekend, uh, the 15th Friday. That's the 15th, right? I don't want to get the dates wrong. Uh, it is. Uh, yep. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 17th. Uh, they're going to be streaming all day. There's going to be stuff released. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, the schedule should be up. Everything should be uh, ready to go uh, on Twitter. So literally follow any of us on Twitter and we're all retweeting it. We're all making sure the word gets out. Um, but basically, we're all going towards the GoFundMe that Bobby's uh, niece has set up. It's we, we've raised a lot of money so far, which is awesome. I've been so happy and, to see you. Come and in. I want to say one thing right now, yeah. Mark. Mark, you've been a hero in this, man. <laughs> when I heard what you did and the efforts you did, a thousand dollars, you were able to get that right away to add to the 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 the, the GoFundMe. <laughs> Yeah. codes out of the yin yang you've got those coming too because you've got yeah. some great connections and you know you were able to leverage that um so i appreciate that and i'm, I'm glad that you're able to get you know get the support you did yeah uh yeah I, uh <laughs> thanks <laughs> um i i mean bobby and i have been friends for a long time i had to do anything that i could and uh since neither of us really stream uh when when sean and the crew kind of contacted me at first i said anything i can do to help I, I will do so i said you know todd and i don't stream we'll talk about it on our show uh but what else can i do and i i i said i have some some contacts for a long time especially image and form uh you know, Ubisoft Canada has been great to us. Uh, Way Forward's always been great to us. So I reached out to a few of these companies. Image and Form really stepped up, and uh, we're we're going to have some amazing prizes. I don't know exactly when the the prize details are coming out, but let's just say Image and Form stepped up in a crazily big way, and we're going to be giving away a ton of games. Uh, and I, I just have to thank everyone that that got back to me uh like i said ubisoft image and form um i know jules watch him at a tui is doing some stuff team 17 id at xbox uh there's there's a many many more that i again i don't want to miss people um but i think it's it, basically they're also going to be giving away a switch uh an xbox series s uh it, it's crazy the amount of stuff and ten dollars gets you an entry uh, but we have a lot of image and form codes, so I think we might be doing something a little different with those, but I, I don't know the exact details, so I don't want to say it now. Um, but yeah, basically, tune in that weekend. Donate if you can. There's also t-shirts, um, so there's a couple of links to the t-shirts, I think, TeePublic, and another site, uh, Redbubble, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, there's two places to get t-shirts. Uh, all the proceeds from everything is going towards just helping Bobby uh, with bills and everything that's that, that he's going to need when when he's recovered. So, um, yeah, and, and today we're recording on his birthday uh, and we announced a whole bunch of more stuff today, like, uh, you know, that <laughs> that there will be these big prizes and stuff. So, um yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I'm I'm pretty happy to uh, to just be part of this. It's uh, it's really cool. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. And if you can help, folks, you donate. You're in the running for prizes. Um, yep. Even if I believe if you're part of the streams and you watch, uh, they're going to be giving away prizes as well. So just yeah. definitely yeah. don't feel like you you, you got to do a lot to be really involved and help out. Every little bit helps. And you know, it, it, I think there's 200 over 200 plus people have donated. So as you can see, a little bit goes a long ways. And and we we mm. we this is the whole point of this. Uh, we game for fun and to meet friends and to support friends when they're down. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Bobby feel better. Can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to, for him to see all of this stuff, the community come in and, and support him in such a big way. So, um, hopefully that's going to be soon. You and I actually played a little bit, which is fun. Yeah. It's pretty odd. It, you know, despite yeah. challenges, uh, <laughs> game pass on PC. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, so we played Gears of War uh, a little bit online, and yeah, it, like you said, there were there were some challenges um, with the the voice chat end. It didn't seem to. It wasn't like dropping connection or anything. It was like weird voice stuff. Like 
you could hear us, but we couldn't hear you. And then you couldn't hear anything. It was, it was weird. So what was going on on your end? I, you know, I really don't know. I couldn't figure it out. I mean, I looked and um, I did notice this in um, in Windows PCs are the best. They never have any problems at all, right? Um, there are like privacy features everywhere. So like, oh, with your microphone and doing things like that. And right. um, so I finally got around it and finally got it to work. And I actually was using my um, PS5 uh, headset uh, that I'm wearing right now with using the wireless dongle. Worked great when it finally did connect. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was a shame because... You and my friend Sean were on, uh, and you guys were able to talk a little bit. And I don't know, yeah. did you guys yeah. even get to play? Uh, yeah, yeah, we okay. we, we did uh, a little bit. Uh, I think our actually no, I don't think we did. We did we chatted for a bit, but we didn't okay. get to actually play. Yeah, no, yeah. We, we just we we talked for a little bit, and then uh, and then I had to come, I had to take off, and then we ended up playing a bit. You and I. Yeah. Uh, afterwards but that was yeah that was it so we didn't actually play uh we just we just chatted for a bit so uh yeah so nice guy. yeah we, we we played um uh escape mode mm-hmm. and it was funny in escape yeah, mode, with the random I, I forgot yeah yeah it was it was we i thought that was a lot of fun and mm-hmm. the funny part was i didn't realize ammo was so scarce in that game oh yeah so like, like in that mode just, specifically like uh-huh. i've never in in multiplayer and stuff like regular multiplayer and the story mode for the game it's not often that i'm like oh no where's that it's not like resident evil but in this mode it was like i'm just straight up like someone give me a hammer i'm just gonna punch some bad guys (laughs) in the face like there's it's just like what is this yeah escape mode's great but basically it's three players cooperatively uh pve you're going out of this level to escape this green gas that's going to basically take out the the hives uh as you escape and you have these i mean it's just like gears but um the cool part is i i kind of thought it was neat how um you know you could bring down uh i think you had diff- everybody had a little bit of different abilities like you could bring in a uh sort of like uh, just a a batch of weapons or, mm-hmm. or different things like that which was a lot of fun and we got to the end and as soon as this like the gates are about to close and this big ass guy comes in i'm like <laughs> oh we've got him we'll take him out and I'm like i have no more ammo and like, yeah. who's got ammo? And yeah, yeah. I was I was very lucky because I we we did kill one of the big creature things, mm-hmm. and it it dropped a, a hammer and uh, or like this big I don't know. Yeah, I guess the the best way to describe it would be like a, a club or giant an axe, yeah. hammer yeah. club kind of thing. And uh, because we had gone through a, a, a few parts of this level, I was like, okay, ammo's pretty scarce. I'm going to swap out one of my weapons for this big thing and just start clubbing people to death. So it was luckily, <laughs> lucky that I had that at the end because it, it was like, oh, everyone's out of ammo. I guess I'm just going to start swinging. So uh, I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting mode, but I do kind of like that that uh, scarcity of ammo because it, it did add to the panic a bit. It wasn't oh, yeah. just running, gunning through. It was like, make every shot count. Like this is, uh, this is a different mode. This is a different gear. So I want to play more of that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's very easy to pick up and play get into it, and, it, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think we were playing at one of the lower difficulties, so it probably would have went far worse <laughs> if, we, if we had been higher difficulty. <laughs> but the mode I finally got to play with Sean was um, the Hive Busters. Uh, it's basically mm-hmm. this new campaign that released for Gears. It's a short campaign. It's a fully new squad. I guess these characters have been part of the multiplayer for a while, but these characters that were in there, and they all have different distinct abilities. Like one person put up a shield. One person can add a cast of weapons one person has a vibro knife or something and so if you and then you can play that game with um either singly and have two ai players or you can go up to obviously totally or three players total on your team and we played a, a, through that and it's very fun it's i mean it's nice it's perfect thing just to get in there just play a level so we just played a level and i had to quit out but i mean it's a great just it's a perfect way to get into gears if you never have actually i think it's the greatest entry point because it's not too deep and if you like it guess what you've completed it and you can move on to whatever other gears you want to play but it's brand new and everybody's cool. coming in at the same time that's awesome yeah we'll have to uh, we'll have to get around going pretty soon yeah i mean and i will say with covid the one thing that most people can't say anymore they've got really a good excuse <laughs> <laughs> like to go in places because there's really not much to do so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, their their schedules opened up so um mark you've been playing a game that uh i have never heard of yeah yeah i i don't even know how i found this honestly it was uh it's it's an iOS game, and I I think I was just actually just 
kind of browsing through the app store on my iPad, looking for something to play. And I was looking at the, the Apple arcade games and, um, nothing really caught my eye although there have been some really cool games released lately that i want to get into but i've been very distracted by golf on mars so it's a little physics-based golf game that takes place on mars fairly self-explanatory okay so, uh but the, so the gravity um, is a problem no actually gravity's gravity's pretty easy to get oh, uh, okay. get a, a track of so it's just um everything's red instead of grass i suppose uh it's it's kind of just it's weird. Uh, the landscape is a little kooky at times, um, but you basically just keep playing golf indefinitely um, because apparently all of Mars has been turned into a golf course. So I'm on Thanks, whole. Elon Musk. Yeah, I... <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I'm on hole 600 and something. I've taken, no. um, I don't know. A, over a thousand strokes at this point. I'm still below par because uh, all of Mars is a par three, apparently. Um, it's just, it's so stupid and so great. And it's just like, sometimes you'll get a hole in one because the hole will be like just directly across in a straight line. And other times it's like, how the actual hell am I going to get this in the hole? And you take like 20 strokes, but um, it's, uh, it's just like really stupid. And you can play it for like, 30 seconds literally just do a couple of holes in like a minute or whatever or you can sit there playing for literal hours and uh and just play a hundred holes at a time so it's it's like a perfect perfect mobile game i've been mostly playing on my ipad because i like the big screen and uh and and the more flexibility i i find it a little cramped on my phone but it is just so dumb it was i think two or three bucks and uh I don't know. I'm just super hooked. It's it's ridiculous. Wow, this thing uses probably must take like a GTX 3080 to play. I mean, the <laughs> I'm textures lucky I have on this the power thing. of the iPad Pro. I'm, I'm telling it's you. literally got four textures, I think. Yeah, it's it's, Five it's pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah, and the ball is, moves. Uh, I saw a little. It's on Steam as well. I was looking at. It, I'm like, okay. the ball moves really slow. <laughs> or is it that not? Can. Right? Okay. It can. It can. It. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's it's not like uh, you're not really swinging like uh you know like a regular golf game like you can kind of yeah. judge the angle and stuff uh yeah if you literally if you watch a video of it you're going to you're going to understand everything there yeah. is about this game it is not complicated it is just one of those simple phone games that is just mindlessly fantastic I, <laughs> it's 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 giving me kind of like alto's adventure vibes sure. where it's not um, like also Alto's adventure is, is way more beautiful and way more Zen than this game. Um, but it is kind of simplistic and you're just kind of touching the screen and doing jumps in that game. And in this one, you're just kind of picking your angles and hoping it goes in the hole. And then you move on to the next hole and the next thousand holes after that. And you just, um, like I said, it's just a good kind of mind escape, which, uh, as we've mentioned, we've all needed the last couple of weeks. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this has been a good game for me. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously it doesn't sound like you're playing on the toilet, so missed opportunity there, Mark. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay, well, you don't want to give yourself up. Well, I played a game that was also, you know, high-end entertainment, and that is Ooh. Cobra Kai. I think the the extended journeys, I can't remember. There's like a <laughs> title to this, but it's based on the TV series from Netflix. And I'm like... And I, I love the TV series. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, this should be dumb and fun. And I got it off of Gamefly. They sell games actually pretty cheap. Uh, and I got it for like 12 bucks on Switch. So I'm like, nice. this, this isn't going to be horrible, is it? This is actually a lot of fun. This is not, it's got, it's it's not an like an A plus game, but this is essentially Streets of Rage, Final Fight, those type of games. And the fun part is, that you can swap out between characters. So I start off with as Miguel, who is one of the main characters, but then you mm -hmm. can swap out with Johnny. So you can play oh. either character. They all have different moves, too. Interesting. Um, and then the other part is you can play this as either Cobra Kai or Magido. So ah. and it actually tells you to get wow. best, the best ending, play both. Um, you have to finish the game from both um, uh, uh, dojos to get the best ending. So basically wow. you can play it twice. So and it's a lot of fun and the they got the voice actors to do the voice sound. 
The well, power ups are just crazy over the top. Like, you know, uh, it's fire and ice. So Cobra Kai is fire. Uh, Miyagi Do is like ice powers. And the guys you're taking on are just over the top, like, you know, the big fat guy or this guy, you know, lots of punks and things like that. You fight <laughs> at a miniature golf course. You go through. Um, you have special moves. There's actually a lot of special moves. You can pick up, like, go- baseball bats. You can kick things at people. You have really nice. cool throws. It just, it's just a blast. I mean, I'm just That's having awesome. a, fun, a fun time with it. So I'm definitely going to play more of this game. Um, there are things that are kind of just silly because you're like – to, to move around, it just feels like a very dated, like, traversal type game where, like, you have to go around and down and side to go uh, this way. Right. So it does feel like a double dragon type of game where it's like they, they put their, but apparently, with somebody who's even talking about, like, they actually use a lot of, like, uh, characters that are not really part of the actual, like, game. Like, there's a mall cop on a Segway. His name is Blart. There is two guys named Chandler and Joey. Like they like are going deep into like all of these like pop culture things too, which is great. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. So I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm deep into C- Cobra Kai season three, so I love the fact that we're getting a game based off of this. This is a lot yeah. of fun. That's great. That show's so good, and I'm I'm glad to hear the game is awesome because I literally just kind of like put that off as like a, ah, this is a cheap throwaway game. I'm not gonna pay attention to it. So I might actually have to get that. It's like twenty bucks in the eShop right now. It's gonna get, it's gonna be cheaper. It will. It sounds like it's a lot by of fun. This, It's by the same people that made the GI Joe piece of crap. So apparently oh, okay. they put their, they put the dev, the right dev team on this game. So all right, yeah, I like it. Uh, the only other game I've been really playing. I mean, I've been I've been doing like some Fortnite, some more Tony Hawk, but I've talked about those a lot. Uh, I've just restarted Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order. I uh, after watching The Mandalorian talking to Charlie every couple of weeks about Star Wars, uh, playing uh, Star Wars Squadrons. I wanted to play kind of more of a a more action Star Wars mm-hmm. game, and we don't have Lego Star Wars yet. So going back to Fallen Order, um, man, that game's fun. And and way more polished now than it mm-hmm. was when it was released. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's really nice playing through it. My wife was watching uh, a little bit of it. She was like, this is, this is like actually pretty good. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll finish it again or might just kind of slowly pick at it, but it's it's been really nice to to replay that game, especially on uh, on the Series X because everything loads so much faster. Oh yeah, and uh, quicker zoom is is uh, is nice. So it's uh, yeah, really cool to go back to. But that's really, I mean, that was my game of the year last year. So if you want to hear me gush about that, go back a year and uh, I'll I'll you know. We'll pause this one, go back, listen to me talk about Fallen Absolutely. Order a whole bunch, and, uh, and then come back. So that's that's basically all I've been playing. I've been um, slacking on on new games, but you've been picking some some other stuff up. So uh, let's hear about that. Yeah, yeah, and just one last thing on on Fallen Order that made me think of uh, the announcement that came out today that Lucasfilms Games, right, the new studio alignment. Which the only thing I can take away from this right now is. I feel like this is like stage two where it's going to be more of the Marvel mode where they mm-hmm. pick any studio they want to make a Star Wars game versus now the EA, the EA yeah. focus they have now. Yeah, uh, I, and I, I'm fine with that as long as we get Fallen Order 2. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's the only thing. I don't want them to be like, you know, Lucasfilm Games is starting fresh because i'll just i'll set some stuff on fire if i don't get fallen order too um so i'm I, i'm hoping you're right with that i hope they they're like hey ea here you go you guys are handling fallen order too you guys are handling squadrons too but we're going to give another team or another studio a chance to do whatever a mandalorian game or huh. uh, another jedi game or whatever it is i i just um yeah i, I hope that's what that means yeah, and the good thing, we know there's a great team to make the uh, Masters of Terrace Kazi, and that is the Cobra Kai team. <laughs> yeah. I would, uh, honestly, like, if they made some, uh, like, Super Star Wars style, like, Super Nintendo looking yeah. kind of feeling games, like, I'd even dig that for a Mandalorian game. Like, just run and gun even like a, a mandalorian metroidvania 2d side scrolling action game that you know you have to revisit some planets go to some different planets but it is all that kind of pixel art 2d kind of uh yeah metroidvania like retreading your path getting different power-ups for mando like man sign me up for that game anytime 
Absolutely. So yes, I did play a new game, Mark. Um, Gamefly gods were nice to me. They uh, positioned into my mailbox Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War or Cod Blops Cold War, as we would call it. <laughs> this yeah. is an interesting thing because I got the because this game is so weird. There is no smart delivery of this game. There is a right. there is an Xbox One version. There is a Series X version. If you want the Series X version, you pay what seventy bucks or whatever. Um, it's it's yeah. there's a premium price for it, but there's they, and the same thing with PS4 to PS5. There's a, there's actually individual versions of this game, which is so weird. But mm-hmm. I got the PS5 version from GameFly. I didn't have to pay anything more for that. The game comes loaded with um, three basically pieces. So it comes with um, Call of Duty multiplayer, Call of Duty Zombies, and the Cold War uh, campaign. Um, and then the War Zone is separate. That is something you download separately right, as part of this. Free, but right. Exactly. It's free, but it incorporates parts of Cold War into it, too, which is really weird. Okay. This is such a weird thing, though. So I was playing the campaign. Campaign is a lot of fun. This is like, you know, it takes place in some um, – this is basically the 80s and 70s cold war era and we had that with black ops before but this is this is definitely feels like it's just really embracing that 70s 80s we're going into afghanistan we're going to go to vietnam we're going to do some you know the russians are doing their thing so we're, we've got this group of cia agents that go in uh so that's kind of what black ops has always done it's always a lot of fun um so you're playing kind of in that type of throwback era this is full-on call of duty campaign where it's a roller coaster ride you know it's it's very much like um every all of these things happen they're like triggered there's no really smart ai they just always happen the same way so it's really right. much it's not like a hello where you've got really reactive ai they do different things but it's really it's really just makes you feel like you're a golden god just raining hell <laughs> and that's that's perfectly fine for me that's uh fine. the main the, the one of the main guys looks like robert redford who has been like uh clawed and beat up a little bit but he's got the hair and everything um the the cast of you know crazy characters you get like a spicy british gal with you from mi6 so it's a lot of fun um and i'm enjoying it but as i was playing the campaign it says not installed completely yet after i played started playing i'm like what do you mean they make you install three parts or download three parts to get the whole campaign. Oh, wow. And it just, so there's, only, just like there's only one on the that. disc. There's only part one is on the disc. So then you have to download yeah. another 60 gigabytes, Mark. Yikes. To get it all. So we'll all, when all is said and done, I think it says 189 gigabytes minimum install on this. <laughs> it's insane. Wow. That's without Warzone. Wow. Yeah. So that is just crazy. Just, just be on the lookout, folks. If you've got a small hard drive, Call of Duty is just, oh, I don't know. They didn't like a, 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 a high risk texture that they couldn't. Get on it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, it's speaking of small hard drives. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. PS5 is, you know, uh, 825 gigabytes. When all said and done, you think you get about 680 or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's one of those things right now. Nobody has a uh, a wealth of hard drive space right now no. unless you bought the expansion card or something like that for, you know, the Xbox. So, um, yeah. So other than that, um, I played the zombies mode, which I'm horrible at, but it's still a lot of fun because right now it's like the Christmas mode. So you can get like snowballs and Dumb. you're fighting like these mutant like they almost like like reindeer kind of <laughs> yeah it's just it's just All wacky right. but if you like zombies it's there again i don't know it's kind of old by this point but yeah i, I enjoy it. i'm definitely going to play through the comp- campaign it's a lot of fun it's over the top um but it's not nothing that you've never seen before and i think it's like five hours long so i come for the campaign do not stay for the multiplayer so i'm, one of the, I'm like yeah, the two percent that's i always get uh, Call of Duty games on sale nowadays mm-hmm. uh, if if I get them at all uh, because of that I, I've I've kind of fallen off of I used to be super into Call of Duty multiplayer but I, I've I've since kind of fallen off so now I play them as a dumb popcorn movie that I can take part in and uh, it's it's a Michael Bay kind of just explosions and guns and just whatever for a couple of hours and then I'm done with it so if I can get this on sale I might. Yeah, and I, I will say though, from a next gen feature, they really took advantage of the DualSense 
every gun feels different. The way the triggers are and the way the resistance, everything, it's really cool. The 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 um haptic feedback really feels awesome too. So I'm glad it's not just Sony doing this, and so and other developers. Fortnite I know is incorporating it too. So that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I did try Warzone just to to see, hey, what's all this big deal? And it's and it's. Warzone. I mean, really, it's it's not a game that's going to get me into uh, the battle royale, but it's there if you want it. It's free. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but but to mark something you did say about storage space. So mm-hmm. I um I have basically been a, a, a hypocritical person when it came to, comes to <laughs> next gen. I said I was going to do X, and I have done Z. Um, so I did pick up I, I picked up an Xbox Series S. So I was able to. Uh, get one actually because originally i had pre-ordered one at walmart back in october canceled it because i'm like i don't need that i'm getting new pc i'm good to go i got game pass and then uh realized that my son is just going to take up my pc time totally so now i have no essentially no access to pc or xbox so i said well you know what i'll get the xbox series s because i don't really need the the highest of high end i just want to be able to play game pass games so that's exactly what it is 300 bucks play it there i uh pre-ordered it from walmart again but it was going to come at the end of January. But for some reason, I just checked Best Buy locally, and they had it. So I nice. got it there, canceled my pre-order after asking somebody if they wanted it. They didn't want it. So here we go. Xbox Series S. This thing is tiny, Mark. It is – the width of it is the width of the controller. Like if you put it sideways – That's just wild. Deep. And it's half of the size of like a PlayStation 4 or whatever. It's just a little bread. It's like the size of a loaf of bread. But wow. shorter. Yeah, so it's it's really cute. Um, it's got all the ports you need. It's it's light. It's neat. Uh, works really well. When you put all your stuff in, it's easy to set up. All my stuff is there. I have two profiles of Xbox, so I have all these games across two profiles from back in the day. So it's very fun. I got all these games, and I decided that I was going to go down the road of getting a, an external SSD USB. For after Digital Foundry actually did a, uh, they did, they showed actually that this setup is essentially almost the same speed as the expansion card for mm. uh, transfer speeds and things like that, and actually playing Xbox One games, non-enhanced wow. games. Right. So if you're going to play Series X or S enhanced games, those have to be on the either internal. the internal or expansion card. But for anything else, you're good to go. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm, all the Series X games will be there, uh, if I'm going to play them, and going back and forth, it transfers so fast, Mark. I mean, literally, 50 gigabytes took, like... 15 seconds. Wow. So it's like, if you want to do it, and this is 100 bucks all in for this versus 200 for the expansion card. So if you're looking for an option that you don't have and you don't have the, the 200 bucks for that, this is just another option. And obviously, you can keep on adding on if you want. So um, when, when awesome. the expansion cards get cheaper, that's great. But in the short term, if you do, do need space, there you go. I think that's a good way to go do it, and it's fun. Um, yeah, I'm, I, so I'm really enjoying this. It's great. I am going to start playing Destiny 2 because that's why uh, I've really wanted to play that and some EA uh, play games. So I'm all set. Awesome. Awesome. I'd love to get it back into Destiny. I think there's a few people that are saying that now that it's on Game Pass. And Yeah. Uh, I actually just uh, – just a- I think a- after we played Gears, I-, I went in and I was like, man, it's a multiplayer. Like the- It kind of got me in the mood for this yeah. nostalgic multiplayer. And I-, I didn't jump in, but I downloaded Destiny 2 and all the expansions. Uh, just to have it on my system. So um, let's let's get some of that going. Absolutely. Yeah, Destiny 1, I put 250 hours in. Uh, Destiny 2 less, but I'm excited now because all it's all there to play for free. Yeah, so that's I, it. Not, wait, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so... It was funny, after, after the, the Gears fiasco, uh, we were joking <laughs> while we were waiting for you to come in. We were joking. We were like, yeah, he's going to order a Series X, S or something like that just to, just to bypass all this chat uh, headache stuff. <laughs> And then you did. It wasn't quite related to that, but it was no. still a very funny coincidence that we were just like, yeah, he's just going to straight up order an Xbox. Yeah, it's all gone awry, Mark. 2020 yeah. changed me. <laughs> a changed man. <laughs> but you know what? I'm glad I can play wherever I want. I don't have to worry about That's that. That's pretty great. And yeah, yeah. I'm pretty blessed to be able to do that. So, yeah. Uh, so we move on to – normally we talk about Newsflash, uh, but we're going to actually talk about – this is kind of forward-looking. Most anticipated games of 2021. So uh, I, I'm hoping we will get games in 2021. It seems like we've already had some games delayed. Outriders is one of the first games that was delayed, uh, but it's delayed for a good reason. They said mm-hmm. they want to make it right, and the cool part is they're going to give us a demo first to make sure we're an informed consumer, which I love. Bring on more demos, please. And that mm-hmm. game's coming out in April. So that game looks to be a lot of fun, and that's also a co-op online 
came kind of game with the campaign. So look forward to nice. that. But beyond that, hopefully we don't get any more uh, delays. And we kind of looked at what was coming. So we each have a list of uh, games we are looking forward to this year. So, uh, Mark, why don't we go over the, the games we both agree upon that we're both looking forward to? And just because I don't have it here doesn't mean it's not an anticipated game. Uh, okay. Man, okay. And I think you got one here. You, got, you might have one game on here that I – think is wishful thinking that might <laughs> i think so there's a few so uh, let's i'll just start going through my list and then maybe you'll go through yours yeah. and we'll, we'll both talk about the those so uh my first one gotham knights uh i i love the the arkham series and uh this looks like a cool extension of that uh, batman's dead and let's see what everyone else is up to so i i, I yeah more of that please let's let's do this mine as well and yeah. the developer just came out. This is Montreal WB. And they said they actually, this is a brand new uh, Gotham City. Because they said they could not mm -hmm. do the type of co-op type of things they wanted to do in the existing like Arkham set pieces. Because it was too constrained. So they needed right. to play with that to make it better. So um, I love the fact that we're going to get this type of gameplay with these type of characters. Because you're not saying, because if you want a Batman game, we're probably going to get one again. But for this and these characters that have kind of been in the shadows, mm -hmm. I love this. That's pretty cool. Uh, the Gunk is the next one on there. We talked about Image and Form. Uh, this is a very weird kind of departure for them, and I think Xbox exclusive, mm -hmm. maybe Xbox PC. Uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, I don't know much about that game. I mean, I think we got one trailer when it launched. It. I mean, yep. I, I'm hoping we'll hear more, I, and I'm really excited to see how they're going to start rolling out gaming details. I hope we don't have to wait till June because this mm -hmm. year, last I, I just want to hear more more frequently from 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 xbox hopefully and we'll get that so um yeah, yeah. the gunk looks really cool uh great team um and building off of that uh for more xbox excitement i mean we this is the big delay but halo infinite we know finally mm -hmm. coming this year and uh I, i'm excited for that i like people kind of crapped on it when it was delayed and how it looked when they showed it off and all that kind of stuff i'm just excited to get into halo uh, it seems like people in our community anyway, I know Sean has been doing uh, Halo Saturdays and seems to get really good reception from that. I have to jump in one of these days uh, and play some Halo multiplayer, uh, but I'm looking forward to a new Halo experience, and I, I think this one's going to deliver in the fall. Yeah, I'm hopefully we'll be able to play some Halo uh, co-op campaign with my friend Sean. He missed out. He didn't own an Xbox One, so he missed out. And I don't think he ever played 4. So I would right. gladly play 4 and 5 with him because I, I think while some of the story beats and things like that weren't perfect, the gameplay is excellent. So yeah. uh, I, I'm all into that. And, yeah, and I can't wait for this, especially when it's going to be an open, kind of more of an open Halo, which I still mm -hmm. don't know what that means. I'm curious how they're going to do that. No one does. But... It's, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, but that, that gameplay uh, should be excellent. Yeah. Uh, next on my list, Halo, or uh, sorry, <laughs> Hogwarts <laughs> Legacy. Halo Legacy. That would be uh, yeah, the next one. Maybe. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Um, I'm just I'm looking forward to some Hufflepuff open world ac ac action RPG shenanigans, I guess. Uh, that's, you know... Um, I hope they deliver on this game. I hope it lives up to how it looks, and I hope it's not too bogged down by J.K. Rowling being a terrible person. So um, <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. I think there's a I think there's a patch for that. <laughs> I hope so. I I don't. Oh, man, I I hate it when terrible people create great worlds, and it's just like, can we just take this away from you and like we own it now, and you can just go off and be terrible. Um, because, yeah, that, anyway, let's not get into that. And let's no. talk about Breath of the Wild 2. I'm guessing this is the one that you're like, er, maybe, wishful thinking. Mark, but, uh, as a, as a Zelda <laughs> game ever not been delayed. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm... Uh, but they actually haven't given have us a date, one. right? <laughs> no, I don't so think So it's not delayed anything. if they never give us a date. No, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm just going to keep saying, like, last year I said this game was going to be the thing that they released to com combat PS5 and Xbox Series launching. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. So We got Age just, of Calamity, Mark. That's almost the same. <laughs> that's exactly what I was... Yeah, sure. Anyway, so that. Uh, Lego Star Wars, I mentioned that before. Come on, just give that to Charlie and I. We need it. Will this game finally have online co-op? Probably not. <sighs> Why? <laughs> Why, Mark? <laughs> 
Because I would actually play. Everything. I would play this game with you. I'd play with Charlie. I like the Lego Star Wars games. I don't love them enough to just keep playing them myself. I need somebody right. to you know have a beer with and let's see, let's break some bricks. Yeah, and that uh, yeah. So I, I play all the Lego games with my wife. We love it. So that's I, I've never really worried too much about the online stuff. But now that my nephew is playing more online games it's it's yeah. something that i'm considering and of course playing with you guys would be would be super fun as well um but the last game on my list uh super mario 3d world bowser's fury is going to have online multiplayer there's going to be a new trailer dropping before people even listening uh listen to this uh 10 a.m my time tomorrow morning so 9 a.m Ooh, i Eastern. didn't realize uh, yeah, just They're enough. They're finally going to tell us recording. what Bowser's Fury is, Mark. There's going to be a two-minute trailer, oh, so no. how much they can fit in that two minutes, we will see by the time people are listening to this. Uh, but that game's coming out really soon. I think that's, uh, what, early February, mid-February, something like that? So um, yeah. I'm looking forward to playing that. And uh, my brother yesterday said that if the online multiplayer works, he's going to pick it up. My nephew will pick it up. So we'll have some like four player co-op, uh, my wife and I, my nephew, my brother, uh, and just have some uh, some Cat Mario fun. Absolutely. That was one of my favorite Wii U games. Really loved it. Um, and Bowser so Fury. Good. I hope that's something cool. Uh, I hope it's just not like, you know, Bowser's just sitting there and being mad. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. It's, it's like a life simulator with Bowser. It's his daily life. He just sits there and gets angry when you know a, a cat poops on his lawn or something. I don't know. <laughs> cat Mario. I'm sure Nintendo <laughs> could pull it off. <laughs> oh well. Uh, yeah. For me, the first game is Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, this is actually a Bethesda game. Um, this is funny because it's a Bethesda game that's coming to PlayStation as an exclusive. I don't know how much of an exclusive it truly is. It looks like a crazy crazy first person martial arts but with special abilities game with some very odd almost like supernatural elements like headless japanese girls and things like that so it's just a weird mix which makes me excited about it um i i, I like this developer i believe he makes the oh, i have to look this up i can't remember who the dev is on this game ghostwire tokyo i think it's the same one who does does evil inside maybe i think um, yeah, I looked this up. Um, it is by Tango Gameworks. They also made The Evil Within, too. Yes. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, if you're into that, I think that'll be a cool game. Like we said, um, I don't know if this is eventually going to go to other, uh, other platforms, but it's very cool that we're getting this game. An exclusive mm -hmm. on PlayStation 5 this year. Uh, then Far Cry 6. Um, this is with our favorite uh, antagonist in every medium across the way. I mean, Gus Fring. We've got, what is it, Moff Gideon. I mean, mm -hmm. he is never a good face to see in any type of medium. Always a mirror, mirror. Exactly. He, he was the mirror, yeah. And uh, what mirror, was that show mirror. called? Yeah. Um, then uh, he was also, you know, Breaking Bad. And, yeah. 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 All over the place. Uh, he's great though, and he's he basically so good, he's basically Carlo. essentially a, a despot in a some type of third world country, trying to raise a son to show him how to be also a despot, and mm -hmm. that's how we know about this game so far. But I love Far Cry Far Cry games. They're open world. They're always fun. I always have a blast with them. I don't know why this game is the one that always like it's my favorite Ubisoft series for some reason, but it's great, and I, I hope it's good. But this is to be like a May game. I hope this wasn't a delay. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, they're they're always again, yeah, super fun. Um, and I always there's 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 always something wild in these games that's that's just like out of left field. That's uh, you know honey badgers or something that you just can't like. It's just it's, it's going to be it's a, dr uh, a drug fueled like uh, a mirage <laughs> of something happening. Yeah. 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 Can't wait. Uh, then we get Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. This game is supposed to come out in Q3, uh, whatever Q we're in. But basically, this is a launch window game. So mm -hmm. we're essentially in January now. So I'm thinking this game has to be a February or March. Although I've heard rumors that they may hold this game back a little bit more because they just want more PlayStation 5s out in the wild because this is a big game. And, I mean, they're, they're, they're constrained yeah. by availability. So I just want this game as soon as possible. I love the Ratchet and Clank games. Uh, they're one of my favorite for uh, franchises for PlayStation. Yeah, that that game looks so good. I think that was uh, we we talked about this before as being the first trailer we saw that was like that is next gen. Mm -hmm. Like that cannot happen right now. And I am super super looking forward to seeing this game actually perform and just like 
watching it all go down and like that those rifts in real time it's it, it this game looks so good but I, I to your point i think um that might be a smart move uh, especially if you want the like launch units up like this could be a game that's attached to playstation 5s just like mario kart 8 is right now or something like to a switch that you know like even for years down the line uh, Ratchet and Clank sells uh, hope maybe, but you know you don't want to miss that uh, hype window when there's only you know four PS5s and and you own two of them. Uh, so that's you know um, yeah you don't you don't want that. No, because at this point uh, they're gonna sell every PlayStation Five they've got anyway. So you yeah. kind of like is that really matter? And yeah, do you wait until they need uh, something to make people excited? So hopefully though it'll come soon. Uh, then Resident Evil Village. Um, oh yeah, this game is supposed to be coming soon. And like I said, a lot of these games, I'm like, wait, that's right around the bend. That's like I think is that an April or March game? Mm-hmm. And I don't know much about it. I think we haven't even gotten game page gameplay trailers. We haven't seen much okay. except uh, just a regular, just a cinematic trailer. And this is mm-hmm. going to be in the first person perspective, like RE7, which I loved. And this one looks like it's more of a harking back to RE4. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna play it. I don't know if I'll love it. I hope I do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it, it's again one of those games that it's like. Okay, at this point, we haven't seen anything. Is this going to be just like shadow dropped, or are we going to get some news really, really soon, or a delay? And 2020, sadly, has left me being like, yeah, no, that's just going to get delayed. Everything's going to get delayed. Always, Absolutely. forever. It's just all going to be delayed. So, uh, <laughs> Thankfully, 2020 wasn't, wasn't delayed. <laughs> Thankfully, that arrived on time. <laughs> yeah. I really okay. expected, like, yeah, January or, uh, you know, December just January 1st to never, yeah, just, yeah, just uh, midnight. December 32nd. That's, uh, yeah, welcome to hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what's, what's your next game? Uh, lastly, and there's more I'm interested in, but these are the ones that really stood yeah, out. for sure. Like, oh, you know, things we haven't seen before uh, in a while. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. The last Vampire the Masquerade we got was like in, I think, like 2008 maybe i think and it's just mm-hmm. a cool world where I mean, it's called the masquerade is because it's about vampires living among the world uh blending in some blend better than others there's different classes of vampires some are more like bcl some are like the, the the fancy lad vampires you see some are like the kids cool kids hanging at the club like in blade you know so it's neat and just how they perform and i just remember the the trailer for this where it had like the people almost like they were like marionettes with their like tendons mm. coming out of their control i'm like once again still don't know much about this game gameplay or anything it feels like i don't know mark we're like really putting a lot of hopes on somebody delivering and we haven't had much to see yeah yeah for sure yeah this game yeah i i'm i'm looking forward to this too any anything you can get like you said the blade vampires interacting with what we do in the shadows vampires is uh it's just, it's just so it's Jackie like daytona time. better be in this game uh, yeah that's, <laughs> <laughs> you have my interest sir give me the game um, um vampires yeah. and dunk trees nothing better <laughs> Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. So let us know what your anticipated games are, because at this point, January is kind of like a, a, just a gimme that nothing is going to come out except for mm-hmm. Golf on Mars. That's the game you're going to get in, in that's January. That's it. Pick yeah, it up. That's it. Yeah. So February, and then we'll have some games coming there with Mario. But beyond that, yeah, more to come soon. Uh, then, Mark, we get into the bonus round. This is going to be our predictions. Um, first, we're going to look back at episode 25 and what we said was going to happen in 2020 <laughs> and then we're going to be even better in 2021 where we give your we're thoughts nail it. it's going to happen yeah so yeah so mark you made some really good notes because we didn't put notes in our <laughs> last year so i said oh, i'm gonna listen to it put these in and mark's like mark said like i just did it i was like thank you sir yeah i had some time i i, I yeah went back listened to the episode uh first off at the start of the episode i said um, that we were actually planning out which movies we'd be able to see in theaters before Finn arrived. That was just strike one. Listening to this, it was just like, oh, we were so hopeful. Like we were talking like Black Widow and Wonder Woman. I was like, oh, we might be able to squeeze Wonder Woman in. It's like, oh, gosh, to, to have that kind of pure optimism and not see what was coming. Um, Did you at least get Sonic in? <laughs> I can't remember. Did you get Sonic in? 
<laughs> no, not even Sonic. Wow. Ooh. No, uh, I saw Sonic, uh, luckily at home, because uh, that movie's delightful. But uh, no, we I, I can't remember the last bloody time I was in a movie theater. Uh, you, you also had a fantastic quote pretty early on <laughs> saying... <laughs> Regarding Halo Infinite, unless something goes completely wrong, this is coming this fall. Remember how good <laughs> Halo Infinite was this fall, Mark? Oh man, it is it's good. It gets worse. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, like I said before, uh, Nintendo really needs a heavy hitter to combat the new systems. I think it'll be all all hands on deck to get Breath of the Wild 2 out this fall in order to compete with the new systems. Who knew that in order to compete with the new systems, we just needed a worldwide pandemic in Animal Crossing to sell out every effing Switch in the world? Like, what the hell? Anyway, so that's uh, that's just a precursor to how badly this episode did we, is aged. Did we get anything right? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, wait, we did get one. I, I mean, I, I think this one's this one's this one's pretty good though. I, I, I think. Oh close. yeah, you got you got one. Yeah, you got okay. one. Uh, yeah. So let's let's start off with Switch first. Uh, what was your prediction for the Switch? I said wonderful 101 special edition announced with beautiful Joe uh, as a special character, and he's also a Smash character. So mm-hmm. I should have shut up. <laughs> at like this wonderful no one. Yeah. Did we got Joe ever come back to did he come into the wonderful one oh one? I can't remember. I don't remember, but I, I yeah, anyway, uh beautiful Joe. I I wish that one came true because yeah, he's just a great character. Um so we'll we'll give you a partial point because of wonderful one oh one, maybe. Okay. Uh, but the the Smash character will will take a take a point away. So there there we go. Uh, I said you, you, you nailed this one. Oh yeah, yeah, really knocked it out of the park with Splatoon three would be announced and released, and it was a free to play multiplayer game with p- paid DLC story and uh, and uh, DLC cosmetics like any other. Uh, battle royale type of game so uh so wing and a miss i still hope that happens but obviously makes not sense. this year yeah, yeah. somebody, somebody it makes least, sense but it just yeah. it didn't work, happen somebody <laughs> said that they don't think there will be a splatoon 3 on this platform but they think they're gonna uh, do it like a, a weird splatoon spin-off mm, i'd play that yeah why not that'd be fun uh so i we moved to xbox and i said we're gonna get a fable announced New game with co-op elements. Now, right. Fable was announced, mm-hmm. but I have no clue about the gameplay or co-op. So I really I, can't. That's a TBD. You also went off on a crazy tangent oh, here. No, I don't know if I, you remember any of that, but your your co-op element was all about your co-op friend would play as your companion animal. <laughs> and you'd have the whole thing would be like you tripping out like you, the the talking to Roach mission in Witcher Three, and that was like your whole pitch on this. And I'm pretty sure like that was like all joking, but that one. But you were like, yeah, the basic part was yeah, Fail, Fable would <laughs> be announced with with co op. Uh, and you still might be right. We we did get the fa- Fable announcement, so um, I'm gonna give you the points on that one because that was that was pretty good. And uh, and you just went off on that that Roach uh, Witcher thing, and I, I thought that was hilarious. Wow, this uh, next one, was, Mark. Uh, this is funny because this is like was a crazy tangent type story. <laughs> <laughs> the X Cloud open beta, including iOS, would drop at E3, and everyone said it'd just be an open beta instead of like a weird little test run thing with a certain thousand amount of people uh, playing on iOS. And uh, we all know how quickly that fell apart for iOS users. So, yeah. No. <laughs> I'll, no. I'll give you points because we did get the open beta. It was really I, weird because you were dude, in the beta, right? I was, yeah. And it was only Halo um, Master Chief Collection. Uh, it played well on iOS, but then everything was just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do this. Uh, shut it down. So um, I think I was wrong other than the xCloud open beta came to ios at some point but like it didn't drop at e3 it wasn't for everyone it wasn't like it never came to anything (laughs) like they're going browser based now so it was like anything that could go wrong with this aside from like xcloud actually came to ios for a bit like everything else 
just got lit on fire and just doused with gasoline. Yeah, the year I uh, switched over to Apple, that's what yeah. caused <laughs> yep. Oh, well. Thanks. Uh, you will be redeemed, sir. Uh, <laughs> we get to Sony now, and I said PS Now and PS Plus gets packaged and rebranded as PS All Play. Mm-hmm. It's VR games and first party undercuts Game Pass on pricing. Um, you will see <laughs> this brought up again. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll see uh, see how long you hold on to this one. Uh, so the, my, my Sony prediction was The Last of Us 2 does not get a PS5-specific version, uh, but rather Sony uses this game to showcase cross-gen compatibility with Xbox One X-style enhancements. Um, so this kind of... Uh, Last of Us 2, right. did, they, they didn't really nope. get uh, a Nothing. next-gen version. Uh, were there enhancements for PS5? I don't think it was quite what I was exactly thinking, because I, I was thinking no. like almost what we got with Smart Delivery. Sure. I think is what I was gotcha. getting at. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, so I think I was I was <sighs> faster heading load in time. a direction. How about that, Bert? That's about yeah. what Sony's doing. Faster load times. There you go. That's your enhancements. Yeah. So I, I, I think my yeah my thinking of this was basically what we got with Smart Delivery. Yeah. Um, that was my prediction. I just got. The company wrong. <laughs> you had faith in <laughs> was, Sony that did not that, that was not. I to guess so. Yeah, thing. yeah. So uh, so that was that was again a kind of a swing and a miss for the most part on on the Sony front. Uh, how third party? That's the last one we did. Yeah, this one's a little weird. I said EA is going to go all in on Star Wars Bioware remastering Kotar. That did not happen, but they did release a game I didn't think anybody thought we were going to get, which was Quadrant. So in yeah. a way, they kind of did go all in with one game. <laughs> You know what? I, I think that I'm, I'm giving you some points for that one, I think, because, uh, yeah, who would have guessed after Fallen Order we'd get another mm-hmm. Star Wars game? We, th- we've we heard that Without Fallen controversy. Order is going to be coming up. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right on this one. Uh, aside from Bioware remastering KOTOR, like, solid prediction. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, apparently Bioware is just too busy remastering uh, Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They like space. Uh, mine... Mine was way, way off. Uh, GTA 5 on Switch. Uh, we did argue back and forth that whether it would include online or not, um, but it was just wrong straight out. <laughs> like, it never came there. And we we said, you know, it's on Game Pass. How can they make more money on this game? Uh, aside from, like, the online transactions for the online mode, but, like, selling the game. Who do you sell the game to? It's a 360 PS3 game, it can work on Switch. Why isn't it there? Uh, They're still, I I still believe in this. I still think they're leaving money on the table. I think this game should be on Switch. And it's it's weird, especially 2020, that it didn't happen because you'd think it wouldn't take as much you know, oh. resources. You could farm it out to someone, just port this, make some quick money, everything's shut down. Just it makes so much sense that I'm kind of thrown off that this actually didn't happen. Yeah, I, I don't understand the reason. It really makes no sense. It's like, uh, I mean, it's not like they're making another GTA 5 any, or GTA anytime soon. So getting another platforms and making more money just, just seems to make sense. So I, I, I'm I'm boggled. I just don't yeah. understand. I mean, unless they're like saving their their time for what is it? China War, Chinatown Wars. <laughs> Bring that back. <laughs> that was an OK game. That was yeah, a, sure. I had that on uh, on DS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so weird. Oh well, um, I think you folks, can still buy that game on uh, on iOS. Oh, iOS. That's right. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's some weird GTA ports that are on iOS, which is just interesting. Oh well. Mm-hmm. So, folks, uh, yeah, we didn't do hot, but you know what? Don't hold it against <laughs> us because we are gonna nail it this year, 2021. You know, it's gonna be the most easy year to predict. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. There's, there's, you know, why. Why about just just give us the awards right now for these predictions? Um, I think yeah, I think we're we're gonna go. So generic industry, you want to lead us off with that? Yeah, I just said because I was in the, in the mindset of you know where we're, where are we gonna be? Last year we had like no real E3. We had the summer of Keeley. Uh, it, it was just all over the place. We had like one offs, and it was really hard to keep track of. So I think there was even a spreadsheet. Jeff Grubb did like a crazy like list of production predictions what was gonna happen. So I, I kind of said I don't think E3 is gonna return. I mm. think. We saw, especially where we're going to be, I think people saw enough return on viewers and everybody doing their own thing 
that I think streaming will still work, um, doing their own thing will work. Um, but I think the summer of Keeley does return, but I think it's going to be like people are going to get behind, like companies and publishers are gonna actually going to get behind it. And mm-hmm. I think they're going to find value in being not spread out over three months, but potentially over one week and everybody gets their day. Right. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on E3? Do you think any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, it's it's a tough one to predict because I think the absence of E3 made people realize, uh, you know, you don't you don't miss something until it's gone kind of thing. You know, it's like everyone complained about E3, but then we saw the summer of Keeley and how spread out it was and how it was kind of a mess. Uh, by the end of it, it was really hard to keep track of even with a calendar. Uh, so I think. Yeah, if, if E3 doesn't return, which it, it might, it might not, but um, I think the spirit of E3 will live on with whatever happens this summer, whether it's Keeley or something else. Uh, something's going to fit that that concise, tight time frame, like you said, a week or even two weeks that, yeah, give each person their day or each studio their day or each announcement, but but have it happen in a more concise, more condensed kind of way, rather than like, well, here's three months worth of like anything ranging ranging from like bombshell to bullshit announcements, and you you can never predict which one's which, and you can't take time off to watch it because one of them's going to be 15 minutes and another one's going to be four hours. It's it was just kind of a mess. So I think the spirit of E3, if it doesn't return it proper, I think that people are going to learn from that and and really really bring that kind of energy this summer yeah and maybe devolver will bring out an, a sequel to their <laughs> e3 video game <laughs> which was <laughs> yeah, awesome absolutely. yeah yeah so yeah I, I i hope they've all learned because the way they did it last year just did not work because uh, if you weren't paying attention you just missed it and it's like yeah. well did you miss it no nope, i didn't so you moved on so it was just yep, weird exactly. yeah 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 so uh we move into our first uh area mark with mm-hmm. nintendo uh, do you want to start? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo has a few um, anniversaries this year, uh, four big ones to be precise, and I think they're going to acknowledge at best one, maybe two of those, uh, and one I'm, I'm giving them only partial credit for because, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so Zelda, I think they'll they'll kind of acknowledge with uh, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess. Um, and I know before I said Breath of the Wild 2, I was excited for, but I, <laughs> I don't know if we're actually going to see that. So, um, we'll, we'll get those, but they're going to be very much, uh, all, 3D All-Stars kind of thing. Like no real improvements over the Wii U versions of those games. I just think they need to be on Switch. Um, and I think for partial points, we will see some Pokemon celebrations for their, whatever it is, 30th anniversary or whatever uh, they're celebrating. Um, we'll get some re-releases on Switch, new Pokemon Snap, but I, because Pokemon Company is separate, I'm not really giving Nintendo the full credit for that one. So I think the only one they'll really acknowledge is Zelda. Uh, they're going to let Donkey Kong Country's four, or Donkey Kong's 40th uh, anniversary go, and sadly, I think we're going to see Metroid's 35th anniversary go pretty much unmentioned and that's going to cause joey ferris and myself to uh to want to just cry in a corner you know it's funny because both donkey kong and mario share the 40th because they both appeared in the same game yeah and at that point uh mario was trying to uh recover pauline and we know how that <laughs> went <laughs> yeah Never saw Pauline again, except when Don- New Donk City as the mayor. <laughs> right. She she moved into politics and and left uh, the plumber behind. She's God, doing better. Yeah. 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 Oh, so wow. what's your Crazy. Nintendo prediction? Oh wow. So yeah, we went a little bit long on this one. Uh, let's see. So uh, Nintendo abandons an E3 Direct, and I think they're going to move forward to just with focus directs on one game or a franchise, kind of like we saw with the Mario 35th anniversary. We got that big everything that was coming out for that. I think that's where they're going to continue. We may get a tweet, and then it's like here's the the, the thing, the video on it. So it's right. kind of interesting because they, you know, they uh, pioneered that, and it seems like they've just gone away from it. So yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a sad thing because I kind of miss really those weird. days of, of the, the fun that they brought. Uh, then Nintendo Online, 
I think they're going to finally bring another platform in. This year they skipped, a, oh, you know, so. 2020. They didn't bring in anything past uh, SNES. Um, I think it's either going to be Game Boy Color, because I don't think Game Boy itself is enough. I think it's going to be Game Boy Color, where you could go. Yeah. Could go. I, well, I, I would actually go as far to say Game Boy would encompass both Game Boy, Game sure. Boy Color, and GBA games. Oh, nice. That's even better. Yeah. I like that. Or Nintendo 64. I, I don't know where the cutoff is, though, with Nintendo Online. Somebody talked about file sizes, things like that. Um, yeah, and at that point, the, have the N64 games aged well that just regular ports would Some. Be some yes. have. Yes. You know, the, the, some some aren't too bad. No. It would be a, a short list, but uh, I think it would be <laughs> worthwhile. Exactly. Uh, then a sports franchise will be brought back, and it will be Mario Golf. Yes, I'm all in. Why not? We only got what tennis so far. This is the only sports game we've got back so far. I think so, yep. Yeah, we need more. Uh, Zelda gets a 35th anniversary game similar to Mario 35, which I think could be fun. Kind of like just you know, it's the original Zelda where you have to de- defeat like a, a dungeon. They just use the dungeons maybe and do it that way, or they just okay. use the screens because they don't Zelda. It's the screens versus right. actually a continuous level. So they could have fun hmm. with that, and you get you know you get all the more enemies and things like that. So that could be fun. Uh, and then we get the 3D Zelda All Star Collection, similar to the Nintendo Power Disc. Remember that, Mark? Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. I, I like your Zelda predictions better than mine, but uh, we'll we'll see who's. Well, mine are better. They're not going to be. They're not going to. It's not going to work. <laughs> they always go to the lower <laughs> lowest common denominator. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's let's see who's uh, who's right there. You want to move on to Xbox? Sure, sure. So I say a surprise third party exclusive is going to be announced, and it's going to be released this fall, and that's Ninja Gaiden Revenge. Ninja Gaiden mm. has been a big part of Xbox. I mean. Ninja Gaiden Black was fantastic, yeah. and then we got yeah. uh, the other. Ninja and that's games, been enhanced. I, if you haven't played that game, go back. Ooh, is Ryan Hartford talks about that uh, that enhancement uh, a couple of times on uh, on the Xbox Drive. He's he's mentioned it a few times, and it's it's uh, Xbox One X enhanced, which means Series X would run it even better. Um, go check that game out. Yeah, nice. Sorry, nice. Is that in Game Pass or is that just a or downloadable like ten bucks, ten dollar game? Probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, then I say the Elite Controller 3 is going to be released this year. Uh, it's going to have advanced rumble, uh, advanced triggers, and share and a share button. And it's going to be $199. Ooh. Because like it it. Re- the last one was released in 2018. So it's mm-hmm. been almost two years, and they, I think there's more they can do with that controller, charge mm-hmm. a little more for it, and really make it the premier uh, controller overall. So there cool. we go. Uh, then lastly, an Xbox streaming stick is going to be announced, and it's going to be launched in 2021. I like that one. That's a smart play because, uh, you know, I, I think where where xCloud is going and, and streaming, and, and I think that's a really smart prediction. Um, I don't know if they'll launch it this year or if they'll finally just have the Series X and S stock under control and then – kind of announce it but i i might say the launch might be early like switch time like early Mm -hmm. 2022 or like march ish kind of thing um but that's that's a good one to keep in mind i like that yeah and i I do want to i was ces is happening right now too i don't know if you're paying attention to what's going on but lg announced that all of their tvs going forward will not only have twitch as one of an Mm -hmm. app on the tv but also have stadia Bill right so, in, yep. So, so that's the move we're going to. So, I don't think Xbox yeah. wants to be left behind. No, I, I think they'll be they'll be pushing this out soon, uh, sooner rather than later, for sure. I, I, it'll be interesting to see how quickly they run it out, and did, 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 do they want to, um, or do they think this will cannibalize sales of the series uh, consoles, or do they think you know this is separate enough? Uh, we're not that worried about it. Um, you know, we basically, uh, I think Apple had a similar approach when they released the iPad. Uh, people were saying, you know, this is going to cannibalize laptop sales. You'll get people that aren't buying laptops. Uh, and Apple's look on that was basically, you know what? We'd rather cannibalize those sales ourselves than have another company release a tablet and steal our, our sales from, from us that way. Um, 
so I, I, you know, Xbox could kind of come at that same approach. Like, you know, no, these people aren't buying a console. They're going to get Stadia or this or that or whatever. Uh, so we're, we, <laughs> if they're already not buying an Xbox, we at least want them to buy our streaming stick. So that's, that's a really good one. I like that. And you have an interesting pick because this is a yeah. franchise that's been dead. It's been dead for a bit. And uh, with some recent purchases, I think Xbox could make this happen. A new Quake game is announced, and it's an exclusive. It's the first oh, yeah. full-off Xbox exclusive that we've seen from the ZeniMax purchase. Um, because I think this one's one that it wouldn't really upset people as much as they say, you know, <laughs> if, if they come out and they're like, hey, there's a new Fallout, but it's an Xbox exclusive. There's a new... Skyrim, Elder Scrolls, whatever kind of game, or Wolfenstein or something, like that's going to piss some people off really quickly. Uh, but I think a new Quake game that's Microsoft exclusive would be like, yeah, okay, we'll accept that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where I'm going with that. It makes total sense, yeah. Nobody has a lot of fine, fine memories with Quake unless it was on PC, to right. be honest. Right. And that's why I said Microsoft exclusive, not just Xbox. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be you know, you'll see that still on PC, but, you know, the Xbox Series consoles will get that one as well. Absolutely. Uh, where are we at with Sony? Okay, so this is where I go a little deep because I'm a Sony pony. <laughs> okay, it's, <laughs> okay in 2021, simple. we need a better name for, like, Sony fanboys than ponies. It, it makes no sense. It's just nah, the dumbest ponies, name in the world. Ponies works. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have, what, Xbox and Nintendo's? I think that's my favorite. I came up with Xbox, that one. Xbox, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I said Sony purchase. This is like a multi. This is like the. Yeah, the, you went all out it? on this. What is it? The the multi tiered like dolls, whatever they're called. <laughs> uh, the nesting, the Russian nesting dolls. Yes, they have a name. I can't remember what it is. But yes. Uh, so this is yeah, multi tiered. So Sony purchases all Konami IP, which mm. then leads or some, maybe some. We'll put some there, Mark. I want to get points. <laughs> Sony buys Blue Point Studios, which has been making remakes. Did Demon Souls lastly? They did uh, mm -hmm. the last. Was it uh, Eco? I don't know. They've done a couple there. Uh, then they partner with Kojima on a Metal Gear Solid remake. Ooh! All right. So do I get points if I get any parts of that right? Uh, we'll determine that next year. But I think yeah, you'll get some partial points. I think uh, as you know, I think you'll get. What, how many of these do you get? You'll get a tenth of a point? I don't know how many freaking predictions you have. Here, That's true. Yeah, it's we'll, we'll it's like, even if I get a couple right, I'm still not going to make many points. <laughs> <laughs> you get 0. 0.75 of a point for this sentence and uh, 0. 0.35 for that sentence. Yeah, let's uh, we'll, we'll add some weight to these. Sweat ex ec equity is going on here, my, my picks. Uh, then I say GT7, so Grand Turismo 7 launches, but it's an entry-priced early access platform. They've done this before with Grand Turismo. I can't remember what it was called, like A-Spec or something like that. But right. Basically, yeah, so I think they're going to do that again. Just really, it's early access. You, you hop on board, and they'll continue to add features on it. And I, I think this is where Forza is going, actually, where they want to be a platform. But yeah. I don't think I don't think Forza would do this. I think they would say, "Here's a full game, and we'll keep adding on to it." But right. Sony will be like, "It's like, oh, it takes us 18 years to do this. Here's like three tracks and eight cars." <laughs> <laughs> All right. A uh, long play by Sony here. Yes. Uh, then a new Uncharted game is announced and being made by a spinoff studio launching in 2022, similar to The Last Lost Legacy, or because mm. we're getting an Uncharted mo movie. This might be like, it's like, what is it, the uh, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles or those right. episodes? This is the same thing. These are just more adventures Nate had back in the day. Okay. A spinoff. Uh, now, do you think this would tie into the movie a little bit more? It could. It could. Okay. I, I don't want to yeah. see Mark Wahlberg, though. I don't want Mark Wahlberg's <laughs> face in this game. Kind of like I was just going to say, is this is the model going to be based off Tom Holland? Is it oh, like how – where are we question. going with this? Yeah, yeah. kind of like how they ch changed Spider-Man up in, in the new exactly. game. Exactly. Yeah, That's what I was thinking. The same thing, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, then I'm going back. Going for this, Mark. I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> Our PlayStation. PS Plus and PS Now are going to merge. They're going to be $10 a month total or $99 a year. So you think they're going to undercut uh, Microsoft with the the ten dollars? I think it makes sense because you can get PS Now for like sixty bucks a year, and you can get PS Plus for a year for sixty bucks. So it's one hundred and twenty. Okay. I think for a hundred right. bucks, but if you ten, you get one hundred twenty. So I think it just makes sense. All right. Yep. Yeah, I like it. I like your reasoning behind it for sure. 
Uh, okay, mine is very, very simple because I just went simple with this one. That's that's the Parappa the Rapper is back. It's going to be a new Parappa game. Is it going to be just more Parappa, or are they going to do anything different? Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> are they going to go eight mile? It's going to be like the eight mile version where rags to riches and living in a trailer? I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they'll go super complex with it. I think maybe they'll they, they just have this as kind of like the party rhythm game, get a little bit of that back. Uh, could be kind of a remastered version first uh, to to gauge whether there's kind of the crash model. Uh, so we see a you know Parappa bundle of like the remaster kind of thing of the original games, followed by uh, maybe Parappa comes back properly uh with a new game in 2022 um but i think they're they're gonna do something with parappa the rapper parappa is gonna come back -a? <laughs> yes <laughs> parappa is back uh yes itself. that is the prediction it's the first line of his rap <laughs> that's it parappa is back -a. yep i it writes oh. itself yeah all right JB, okay start start laying some some beats down that tracks all right yeah. <laughs> uh, so lastly uh third party uh predictions so i say it's funny we're both going to focus on the same company ubisoft mm. making another partnership with nintendo and uh, i i would i've got one here but i'm gonna give two uh really they're either gonna make a super nintendo rpg by the rabbits team so not just Ooh. super M mario but it's gonna be it's going to be like the classic team up. And this potentially could be the Amiibo game. We've always wanted Mar Oh, Mar my. Where you get a party of three, and it's whoever. It's like Samus. Uh, uh, <laughs> it could be a Metroid. And it could be, you know, uh, what's his name? The the guy from Kirby. The the, the penguin. Uh, like King DDD? Yeah. They could be just be okay. on a team. Yeah. Right. And, the bad, and then the bad guys could be, you know, Amiibos as well. And I don't know. I, like I just, it. I like this. Okay. Or... They're just going to make a full-on Star Fox game, but it may be more of a – and get this. They're going to go, and they're going to make it like more of a, like a rhythm game, and they're going to tie in like rhythm to the shooting. But then they're <laughs> going to go and phase it through the different eras of what Star Fox looked like. So like oh, it's wow. going to be like the, the, uh, the Wire right. version. Then it's going to be like the different versions through time. I think it would be fun. So I think that game exists, and it's oh, no. called uh, Invector by Avicii. Really cool game. Uh, rhythm shooting. They stole my idea, of, Mark. Uh, Even <laughs> thing. Yeah, go, go. Seriously, there's a demo of that game. Okay. Go play it. You will be ah, okay. astonished at nice. how close you are with a really, really good idea. But I think moving that into Star Fox uh, would, would be really cool. But yeah, uh, Avicii Invector, I think it's called. Okay. Um, really solid, uh, like Rails-ish um space flying rhythm game it, it works it works way better than you'd think and uh i like it I, you're, you're not as crazy with this prediction as uh, as people might be thinking right now uh mine is a little bit i'm gonna say a little bit more grounded because yours <laughs> is swinging for the fences and i love that uh but mine's just uh, wishful thinking that we get immortals phoenix rising 2 at least announced I don't think they'd release it next fall because I think Ubisoft has learned from Assassin's Creed and other franchises that you don't want to rush things out. You want to give them that every two year kind of pacing. Um, so uh, they announced it this year, though, just to build on the success of the first one, because people have been loving that game. I keep hearing yeah. different people uh, on Twitter and different like even messaging on Facebook being like, hey, I heard you guys talking about Phoenix Rising. I tried it out. I love it. Holy crap. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be releasing fall 2022, but we'll hear about it this year. Yeah. And I think the, the perfect plan they've, they've figured out with the Assassin's Creed games is launch the game and then support it year two with DLC. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, some more, yeah, it's just, just anything new, uh, DLC, whatever it is in the Immortals Phoenix Rising world. That's, uh, that's great. Yeah, it was uh, you know our game of the year, uh, so I I cannot and I'm still playing it. I'm I'm getting through the mm -hmm. game slowly but surely, and and I will want to play more. But I'm I'm perfectly fine giving it some time for me to get excited about it again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
Excellent. Well, that is it, folks. We survived 2020. We are going into 2021 strong. Um, we had some folks that gave us their predictions as well. Sorry, we didn't. We weren't able to incorporate them, but thank you anyways. We'll do a better job with that in future episodes. So, Mark, uh, before we leave, tell people how they can follow us. Well, you can follow us on Twitter at co underscore op mode underscore pod or T Oxtra or the underscore Canardian. You can, uh, we always appreciate hearing from people and uh, especially hearing from people on iTunes or uh, where your, your favorite podcast service, but Apple podcasts, uh, the reviews really help and will be rewarded. Send us a screenshot of your review and uh, we'll, we'll send you something cool. Uh, we also have t-shirts available at T public. You can find the whole secret friends unite podcast network. There's a whole bunch of shirt designs there uh, and not just shirts. You can get mouse pads, cups, mugs, uh, stickers, just a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, on T Public, uh, search Secret Friends Unite, and uh, f- of course follow all the uh, Secret Friends podcasts. There's Secret Friends Unite. There's Code Forty Seven. There's uh, of course us here at uh, Co op Mode and uh, the Holocron Chronicles, which I'm excited is going bi weekly, um, which is awesome. Charlie and I have been having a ton of fun with that show, and I'm really excited to talk more Star Wars uh, and fit that into my schedule. So we'll be doing kind of bouncing off for my schedule i could only kind of fit in one per week really uh right now so i'm, I'm super happy to be able to do um co-op mode one week and uh holocron the next so i'm i'm pumped to get that going we're we're gearing up for a special episode um coming up soon we just released episode three we're going to be doing another recap coming up next week uh it's it's great man it's uh, i'm having fun and uh, love love being part of the growing secret friends network it's been great. We've grown this year. The, the only thing I can promise is we're going to have awesome guests and have a great time doing this. If you have anyone you would recommend that you'd like to have on uh, mm-hmm. on the podcast, or if you have a passion to be on a podcast, you got the chops to be on, let us know. Honestly, listen to us talk for an hour and you don't even need the chops. Just a functioning microphone <laughs> and you can talk and to the power two of outlets us that work. That's it. And power outlets that work. And a dog that doesn't bark at a car alarm going off down the street. It's uh, There's constant shenanigans going on on a co-op mode couch. So uh, come join us. Yes, absolutely. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, friends, for listening. It's always better to game together. It's all in the mind. If you wanna test me, until you find the things I'll teach ya, be sure to beat ya. Nevertheless, to get a lesson from teacher, now kick, 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 punch, 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 jump, cha, 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 block, 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 don't get cocky, it's gonna get rocky. We're gonna move down to the next jockey now. Duck, 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 jump, 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 jump,
job, Parappa. You can go on to the next stage now. Yahoo! All right.